today we are very fortunate to have his grace pran govinda prabhu ji in the call uh, welcome to the bhakti sangha group uh, prabhu ji are you there yes mother ai krishna prabhu ji please accept my humble obeisances all glory to krishna जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय निंद जय दैताचंद्र जय गौर भक्त बिंद जय जय श्री चैतन जय नितानंद जय दैताचंद्र जय गौर भक्त बिंद जय जय श्री चैतन जय नितानंद जय दैताचंद्र जय गौर भक्त बिंद So we are reciting Chaitanya Charita Amrita, twenty-five chapter entitled "How All the Residents of Varanasi Became Vaishnavas," and we are beginning from text one twenty-three. These are all famous verses. All the famous verses of Bhagavatam are is in Chaitanya Charita Amrita. So we are going to recite this with uh, invoking uh, Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Eta baad eva jignasam. तत्त जिज्ञासुन आत्मन अन्वेय व्यतिरेक सर्टेनली जिज्ञासम टू बी इन्क्वायर्ड अबाउट तत्त ऑफ द एब्सोलूट ट्रूथ जिज्ञासुन बाय द स्टूडेंट आत्मन ऑफ द सेल्फ अन्वेय डायरेक्टली बेतरी के बम एन इन डायरेक्टली जत वट एवर सेट इट मे बी सर्वत्र एवरीवेयर सर्वदा ऑलवेज ट्रांसलेशन एंड पार्पोर्ट बाय हिज डिवाइन गेस शिल प्रभुपाद ए पर्सन इंटरेस्टेड इन ट्रांसेंडेंटल नॉलेज must therefore always directly and indirectly inquire about it to know about all the pervading truth this is the quotation from shrimad bhagavatam 2.9.36 it is the fourth verse of the chatur shloki for an explanation si adilila chapter 1 text 56 next verse and we will come back to this amate je priti sei prem prayojana karya dware kahitar sarup lakshana supreme affection for me is called love of god that is the ultimate goal of life let me explain by practical example the natural characteristic of such love one twenty five pancha bhuta jaiche bhuter bhitore bahire bhakta ganesh puri ama bahire antare the five material elements are existing inside and outside of every living entity similarly i the supreme personality of god am manifest 
within the heart of the devotees as well as outside his body. Purport. The pure devotee knows that he is the servant of Krishna eternally. He knows that everything can be used in the service of the Lord. Okay, so Srila Prabhupada gave a purport, then we can stop here and discuss this. <clears throat> Before that, I would like to just invoke the mercy of devotees headed by Srila Prabhupada. Om Jnanati Mirandhasa Genanjana Salakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Guru Venamaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Sayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Shapadantikam Bandeham Sri Guru Sri Jutapadakamalam Sri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Sri Rupam Sagra Jatam Sahagana Raghunathanitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Sabadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakhanitam Sya Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Simate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesa Sunnavadi Paschata Deshatarine Banchakalpa Taru Vesha Kripa Sindhu Bhai Vacha Patita Nam Pabune Bho Vaishnavi Bho Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adaita Gadadar Sivasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <clears throat> this conception of to acquire knowledge, it is not only with us, it is also with Krishna eternally. It is very important that uh, as a conditioned soul, how... Um, our constitutional nature is made with if we focus then in the beginning maybe we should force ourselves to hear more understand more because in our eternal nature these things are also there just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to hear from Ramananda Rai he heard it from Raghupati Upadhyay it's not only that Krishna only gives knowledge, he also wants to hear. Generally we see that there is a 10, 11 things are similarity with the soul and the supreme soul, Krishna. And our Acharyas explains like Jnana Sarupa. Jnana Sarupa means embodiment of knowledge. If you ask yourself, be honest to yourself. You feel like you know something. Yes, you have some knowledge. Even the fool in America or anywhere in the world, if you sit down a few minutes with a foolish guy or foolish person, and uh, after a little while you say, so tell me something, and you'll see that person speaks as if he knows. Because it is eternally in our nature. Of course, conditionally, knowledge, uh, the contamination knowledge is not helpful, but it is there. Jnana Surupa. Jnana Surupa means the God is embodiment of knowledge, and because that's what Chit potency is. Chit potency. Satchit Ananda. We are made, Krishna is made of condensed form of bliss, and he is made of Jnana Surupa, complete knowledge. At the same time, he is also Gyata Sarupa. Gyata Sarupa means he wants to know. 
like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to Ganga school, he studied. Lord Krishna studied in Sandipuni Muni Ashram, 64 arts. This is, even though everything coming from him, so Jnana Surupa and Gyata Surupa, both are there. And more we are adapting in this, it is natural to our constitutional uh, nature, constitutional position. Then, another is a Mantra Surupa. Mantra Surupa means reflect. Krishna also reflect. I remember I heard this, Krishna says. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Sanatana Goswami Pad in previous chapter 24, what I heard before, I am going to tell you. So that means this reflecting idea is also eternal. Hmm. So that's called Jnana Sarupa, Gyata Sarupa, and Manta Sarupa. And then Bhokta Sarupa. Bhokta Sarupa means Krishna is eternally enjoyer. Krishna is eternally enjoyer. We also, living entity, feel like always pleasure-seeking by nature. We cannot stop enjoying because we are part of Him. That is eternal. Then, Saprakash. Saprakash means Krishna is eternally self-effulgent. Krishna is eternally uh, fully emanating uh, the effulgence. We also have some, like early days, devotees say that every time they saw Prabhupada, they saw the effulgence coming. Anybody comes in contact with him, get illuminated. Ask yourself, I'm talking to the internet audience, ask yourself, you also feel like to help others through knowledge, through your service. It's a natural why? Because it is eternally there in Krishna. We are part of Him means we also have this. Then another is Paraprakash. Paraprakash means also I want to be um, illuminated by others. I want to also illuminate others. Illumination doesn't mean like some kind of lights or something. Some kind of uh, guidance, some kind of cooperation, some kind of... Uh, a helpful nature. Just like a mother loves the child, this is natural for mother to love the child. It is not that she has to learn how to love the child. When she has a baby comes out from the body, naturally she endowed with it. Similarly, she also relish when the child give a hug. So, because that Rosha has these four things. Palon, Poshan, Taran, Bhatshan. Similarly, in our nature, constitutional nature and Krishna's nature, of course, he is a uh, quantity-wise, he is the ocean amount. Quantity-wise, we are like minute drop. But quality is the same. Then there is the Icha Mayata. Icha Mayata means Krishna has a desire to do things he wants to do in life. He wants to enjoy, he wants to play with his boyfriends, girlfriends, parents, he wants to go do cow herding, whatever he likes. We also, deep down in our heart, even though we are disciplined, we are learning, following Guru, but still we don't surrender our intelligence. We surrender our heart. We surrender our mind and senses we don't surrender our intelligence, means we engage the intelligence how to follow it. We still want to, some sort of control. It is natural, it's eternally there. And in pure form, Mother Jasuda controls Krishna, where Krishna controls everything. The Supreme Controller found himself controlled also. This is where uh, Rosha or transcendental Melostas. Then another thing is Ketrigya. Means I am where I am. I want to be, I want to know. If I am in America, or what's going on with the coronavirus or whatever it is going on, I want to know why it is something, wherever I am. Because Krishna has that also eternally. 
then sarupata sarupata means that i have a existence i have a form i have a body i have a male body or female body or i have a, a tree body or animal body whatever i have to have a body because krishna is the body is not that krishna has a body krishna is the body and we are trying to get out of the body to become a body so what is that means means purpose of the body is beyond the body for us but krishna does not have a purpose of the body is beyond he is the body this is what mayavadi don't understand then another one is prema swabhav we want to feel loved and we want to offer love when we have a friends family we feel we supposed to feel completely joyful we want to sur- surrounded by the those who cares those who have affection love protection for us and we want to also reciprocate give that to others why because that's what the swabhav our nature constitutional nature has this krishna has this anandamay abhasat propat ko this many times rasa vaisha hi rasa mi ayam labdhanandi bhavati krishna even said in ramadalila iti driksha lila vir anand kunde sagho sang nimajjantam mai ka payantam tadiya sitagye su bhaktir jitattam puna prema tattam sata vritti bande the krishna himself claiming i am drowned into this ecstasy so much overwhelming with the happiness please come and join is inviting all the conditioned soul especially the material world so these things are these points we should remember it is a natural that's why now in in this verse is very sweetly explained that uh, first verse etavadeva jigyasham person should inquire person has the knowledge also want to inquire sanatan gosai pad was studying bhagavatam but when he met mahaprabhu he says ke ami kene amai jare tapat hoy who am i why this material world is causing me suffering this inquiry is natural it's not artificial you may think like well he studied bhagavatam he knew all this why is asking this is natural humility means natural humility also natural to remain humble to pay obeisances to krishna is natural paying obeisances to vaishnava or krishna means absence of false ego it is natural not to pay obeisances is not natural that's why on gargamuni maharaj did not want to pay obeisances after the kirtan finish then propa says bow down he said i don't feel like he said just do it but i don't feel like it's like a superficial propa said if you practice for a while it will become natural because soul by nature is humble nature in a constitutional position is submissive to god it is not something artificial but because condition false false impression false in position atho kena prajukta yam papa charati pusha purusha anichchan api baladiva niyojita anichchan api barshneya even though i don't feel like doing it but it is like impose this contamination why should i bow down it is not for krishna we are bowing down to krishna krishna says sarva guya tamam bhuya sinume paramam bacha इष्टेशे में धियमिति तेते बक्सामि ते हितम ते हितम मींस फॉर योर गुड अर्जुन बाउ डाउन टू मी सो आचार्य गिव्स कमेंटरी दैट हाउ इट इज बेनिफिटिंग अर्जुन टू बाउ डाउन टू कृष्ण इज अ कृष्ण इज अ गॉड लाइक ही डिमांड्स ही वांट्स रिस्पेक्ट एवरीबॉडी बाउ डाउन नो ही वांट्स फॉर आवर गुड बिकॉज़ व्हेन वी बाउ डाउन टू गुरु वैष्णव सीनियर डिवोटी एंड कृष्ण we losing the grip of false ego false pride this actually liberate us more we bow down more we are out of false conception 
And there will be a day the false ego will disappear. That will be the day you are completely liberated, free. But before that, it's very hard. Even you see in South India temples, uh, Ramana Jacharya, they're, they're big, giant temples. But entrance is like a short or how do you say, uh, lower gate. Outside gate is big, you go and inside the Gopuram, like when you go enter the main temple, it's like a, you have to like a bend your head. So I remember many, many years, or actually a few decades ago, we were researching that why they did this. Because people are not naturally habituated in their constitutional position, in their natural position. They artificially act like I'm a man, I am this, I am that. So their natural condition is kind of like a lost. So Acharyas are so merciful, okay, they won't bow down. If you make the door entrance lower, then they will bend. Of course, in Lord Ramchandra's case, it's separate. <laughs> Samrachandra says that when he came to get married, after he broke the Haradhanu, then Lakshman, of course, challenged. And then uh, because um, Parasharam appeared, and a whole episode took place that how Lakshman was making a very bold, solid point to to Parashuram, that why are you bragging about this bow? When I was a little child, I, I used to break so many bows. I can break this kind of bow millions. Why one? Parashuram was like, who is this boy talking such a audacity to me? Does he know that who I am? I'm Parashuram. But Parashuram did not know that his origin is Lakshman. <laughs> and Lakshman's origin is Ram. So, of course, that episode has to take place. But then, at the end, uh, when uh, finally that uh, Parashuram understood that maybe he might be the, my origin, so he, then he asked Lord Ram to pull the string, and he did. And he broke it. Then he immediately glimpsed it. But when Lord Ram pulled the string, when you pull the string, you have to let it go. When you let it go, it, will, it has to destroy something. So either it has to destroy the world or it will destroy the knowledge or the power that Parashuram had. So then Parashuram understood, he is my origin. Then he paid obeisances, he said, please, let my, rather, don't destroy this uh, world because you came to do the pastime lila. So you can take my empowerment. And since that time, Parashuram became a young uh, Brahmana. And he, he still lives in somewhere in the world. He travels. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also met him. So at yeah, that time, Lakshman, uh, sorry, Ram was little high. And when Sita Devi came to Garland, then everything peaceful. All these 10,000 uh, Skatriya, they paid obeisances. And um, just seeing Parashuram paying obeisances to this young boy, all their idea to get Sita, or even when they saw that Ram, Ram broke it, they saw he's a young boy, maybe we can beat him up to get Sita, because Sita was extremely beautiful. Sita, the mother Sita is so beautiful. But anyhow, seeing Parashuram paying obeisances to Ram, they ran away. Oh my God, this young boy must be beyond our conception, beyond our understanding. If Parashuram can bow down, so Parashuram glorified Lord Ram in that way. It was very nice. That time when Sita Devi came to Garland, everything settled, Ram was little, taller than uh, Sita Devi. But then Lakshman paid obeisances because Ram did such a wonderful act, specifying Parashuram, breaking Aradhanu, then Sita Devi garlanded. Uh, and at that time it says that actually one Acharya says that Sita Devi also because she jumped up and looked at Ram eye to eye 
and they had a already meeting before that day morning in a garden the first time in their life met not face to face like directly from far in the garden where guru bishamitra was resting and lord ram went to pluck some flower for puja any anyway, other point was that we can see also that how parashuram's all this empowerment knowledge that it also comes and goes and then also we see um chaitanya mahaprabhu's case is another one that this idea of jigyasu etavadeva jigyasam so chaitanya mahaprabhu was so attentive so attentively listening to ramananda rai every day uh, for days and he raghupati upadhyay also chaitanya mahaprabhu asked him a question and raghupati upadhyay used to give answers so this idea of question and answer to learn more one who has the eagerness even the greatest greatest devotee they are always eager to hear more this is a natural symptom so here it says proper translate a person interested in transcendental knowledge must therefore always directly or indirectly inquire about it to know about the all pervading truth what does that mean the next verse it says amate je priti sei prem proyojan karjodare kohi tar swarup lakshan so there is three point here supremely affection for me is called love of god it the love of god it we think our of course we we know that la, our ultimate goal is love of god it but love of god it is not everything love of god it means a asset your own asset finally you got your asset you wake up your love of god it but engagement in devotional service is the ultimate that's why shila prabhupada did not translate bhakti he said devotional service that was his mercy it was a very unique way he translated because in india people generally talk about oh bhakti bhakti but bhakti they think is like if you bow down that's all no no you have to do something to please the lord bowing down it's okay it's good but you have to act such a way your life whole life that it pleases the lord everything you do like you eat you sleep do it for him that is called devotional service sacrificing uh, now we are discussing about krishna it's for his pleasure why because krishna says this bhakti mein thakur even emphasize this सिद्ध देह दिया वृंदावन माजे सेवा अमृत कर दान पियाई प्रेम मत करि मोरे सुनह निज गुण गान सुनह निज गुण गान इवन कृष्ण इज ईगर टू हियर सो इफ वी कैन लर्न हाउ टू सिंग द ग्लोरी ऑफ कृष्ण देन इफ वी कैन पे अटेंशन देन कृष्ण लव्स टू कम देयर and be with you eternally accept you and engage you so this idea of that reviving krishna prem and then engaging shila proper translate supreme affection of me for me is called love of god that is the ultimate goal of life let me explain by practical example the natural characteristic of such love the next one the five material elements are existing inside and outside of every living entity similarly i the supreme personal of god at am manifest with the heart of devotees as well as outside his body we end it with this now you see why shila prabhupad made a separate book for mother kunti because her prayers first thing she write if i recall namaste purushottam ईश्वर प्रकृते परम अलक्षम सर्वभूतानम अंतरबाहिर अवस्थितम एंड शिलो प्रोपाद एक्चुअली कॉल हार वाज द ग्रेटेस्ट वुमेन द प्रेयर्स ऑफ द सुप्रीम सुप्रीमली ग्रेटेस्ट वुमेन समथिंग लाइक दिस शी ही वन टाइम ही सेड दैट me he adored uh, mother kunti devi because krishna so much loved her because of her conversation prayers and 
first prayer she did namaste kunti devi said understanding everything that krishna had done recently kunti was unable to tolerate the agitation caused by great respect that arose in her heart so she began praising krishna she said i am your in a in a uh, vishnuvat chakravarti thagur i remember he put it in a uh, dialogue form you know like a, because when we become very sincere and serious we have to have a dialogue form with krishna it's not like krishna will just take you and you're done it's like you graduate from high school or college or phd and you got a one certificate you know now you can write phd or something like that um, after your name title something like that bhakti is not like this bhakti is that what we practice it stays with us eternally karma they do jagna sacrifice so many things but when they go to heaven they don't do this they just enjoy gyana they discipline and punish the senses they meditate show om om brahmasmi like this and then when they merge into brahman they don't do anything what they did be as a practice bhakti is such a sublime that bhakti what we are doing here we cook for krishna we clean for krishna we feed krishna we we do everything for krishna this also we do in golok bindavan when we go there nothing changes it's a normal family life lokik sat bandubat lokik sat bandubat krishna becomes a family friend a friend that nobody can live without that is krishna consciousness so in the dialogue krishna is asking to mother kunti but i am your nephew why are you offering respect to me then kunti says but you are the supreme purusha then krishna says of course i am a purusha man there is no doubt about that then kunti says no you are the first one ajdam and then krishna says what about the living entities all souls are original also like me i am not only original all the souls are eternal they are original kunti devi says but you are the supreme controller of all origin then krishna says oh in heaven indra is controlling brahma is controlling shiva is controlling there so many controller why you only identifying me as a controller then kunti devi says but you are superior to the nature maya all other controller under maya there is a big difference so then krishna asks mother kunti so are you addressing me namaste purusha ajdam that i am the original purusha as a paramatma super soul kunti devi says no 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 you are imperceptible alaksham propat quote that verse many times so krishna says oh you mean the super soul paramatma nobody see them he is in the heart but nobody see he is also imperceptible kunti devi says no you are situated internally and externally you are inside my heart also you are outside talking with me and if you look at the verse it says he is outside and inside and this is the conclusion of that verse so krishna wants to know from each of us be prepared i'm i'm really not uh, warning but i'm giving you krishna would like to have a dialogue with all the devotees before they enter into last domain it's not like you just open you know wake up from your bed and you are in gulok bindavan not like that you have a relationship with krishna relationship means there is dialogue not just bio data profile relationship means you have to like you know krishna has to like you you have to like krishna's character his nature his personality his compassionate this is what relationship is and uh, some or other if you go to 102 
there is a, this this verse further explained there the what is the purpose what is the purpose of understanding this verse and let's see if i can go back 102 i was reading this morning bhagavater sambandha avideya prayojan chatur shloki prakrita tar koriya che laksham and shila proper tense read the essence of shrimad bhagavatam our relationship with the supreme lord our activities in that connection and the goal of life is manifest in the four verses shrimad bhagavatam known as chatur shloki everything is explained in these four verses the whole bhagavatam is nothing but explanation of these four verses and today we are covering one verse well almost to touching other one and the next one propad right i am the center of all relationship krishna is saying lord krishna says he put this in a bracket lord krishna says i am the center of all relationship knowledge of me and the practical application of that knowledge is actual knowledge what uh, mother kunti and krishna dialogue is a real knowledge on the base of relationship look mother uttara's heart krishna is reciting krishna is about to leave to go to dwarka and the ladies in palace and outside when they heard it they are headed by dropadi kunti uttara everybody they were very emotional because they love krishna so much and all of a sudden ashwatthama sent this uh deadly brahmastra to kill the child in the womb of uttara nobody knew this nobody saw it but then uttara realize that she her womb is being now going to be destroyed by this brahmastra mother kunti when she realized this immediately she she was surprised that krishna is in the heart she knows in the heart of uttara krishna could have protected from the heart but instead not only that krishna just to show his affection he got down from the chariot right in front of everyone and right in front of mother kunti she he entered into her heart and in the tummy and try to protect that child from the brahmastra seeing this she overwhelmed with crying she said he is unbelievable he he takes care of us more than we can even imagine because as a super soul if you do that not everybody could see but the way krishna acts to express his love that he really cares for all of us he he has a affection unlimited affection he cares for us he has a protection for us this is what the relationship boils down to this is what the essence of gayatri mantra this is what essence of om means this is what actually boils down to the whole summary of bhagavatam or chaitanya chaitanya So Sri Lopraba, that's why it's gave very nice. Next verse one of four. If you pay attention, very nice. Sadhana er fall prem mula prayojan sei preme pai jibo amaro sevan. So three two things very important. So far we knew that uh, goal of life is to revive our dormant love. But we are learning here that reviving dormant love is not enough. After you get the love. five that you have a feeling now and there are nine symptoms kanti abhartha kalatam virakti mana sunnata asabandha samatkanta nama gani sadavchi this explanation is given in chaitanya charitamrita also nectar of devotion rupa goshen pad that one who has a love of god it these are the symptoms <clears throat> out of this chaitanya mahaprabhu now mercifully explaining that when you away your love for the lord that's not enough you have to go further what is it let's see what proper translated by rendering devotional service so first right now we are all serving i'm speaking you are listening both are devotional service shravanam kirtanam this one of the uh, two of the nine process these are the most important shravan and kirtan so by rendering devotional service which we are doing what's supposed to happen 
one gradually rises to the platform of love of God. Who is who is who who is uh, uh, arriving there? Who, the soul, or the mind, or the body, physical body? Which one? It is the soul. <coughs> But if the mind is not purified by the devotional process, the physical external body will never uh, grasp it. Physically, I mean, as I mentioned before, we can have the dhoti, kurta, tilak, then we are pure devotee. But the mind, mind has to be pure. Then Prabhupada writes that the love of God and experience you will get. That is the chief goal of life. On the platform of love of Godhead, one is eternally engaged in the service. So after you get love of Godhead, then you have to be engaged in devotional service. That is the conclusion. So somehow or other, we should always focus how to engage in devotional service by chanting or hearing or one of the nine processes. Just do it. When you do it, means your intelligence is guiding you. Iti Pangsar Pita Vishnu Bhakti Chena Navalakshana Bhagavati Adda Tanmane Dita Odikam Uttamam. Who has intelligence? One who engaged in this nine process of devotional service. That is spiritual intelligence. But if somebody is not doing any service to please the Lord, to hear or chant, to serve the Vaishnavas, we just learned. Last few days I was doing seminar on Ram Navami that how, um, what's his name, Satrugna. Satrugna uh, is the one uh, youngest brother, Mother Sumitra. So Mother Sumitra taught three things to Lakshman and then taught also Satrugna something. Very important. Uh, Satrugna learned Lakshman was serving the Lord. Ram, and Satrugna learned how to serve the devotee, Bharat. And the reason why Satrugna is very famous, Balmiki Ramayana give a little clue, that uh, Satru means enemy, Gna means one who has conquered or, or destroyed the enemy. What did he destroy? Well, he killed Lavanasur, where we call Vrindavan today. Uh, Mathura Mandal, Mathura, Bindavan is within Mathura district. And uh, this is established after Lavana Sura was killed by Satrugna. But that's not the main reason why his name is Satrugna and that's what he stands for. He was literally took a inner journey. Inner journey means the false ego, nobody sees it only when act or express, then they see, oh my God, he has so much ego. That he killed within. And how did he do it? By serving Bharat. He was serving devotee. So if we develop, or let's, let's say this way, if we naturally feel like to serve other Vaishnavas, means our false pride, false ego is diminishing. Now, why it is a big deal? Because Bhagavad Gita Krishna says that this transcendental knowledge is actually covered. It is there. So if the false ego disappears, the spiritual knowledge will awake. And that is required. That is required. We need that. And then you will see these nine symptoms. What is the time now? 44. Um, in the verse it says that uh, the nature, sabhav, of the bhakti. So in case somebody is thinking like, what are those nine symptoms? You can type it in Chaitanya Chaitamita or Nectar devotion. Prabhupada gave a few chapters, actually nine chapters, cover this. Skanti abhirta kalattam virukti mana sunnata asabandha samutkanta nama gane sadaruchi. Asakti tat gunakhane hiti tat pasukhi sadaruchi. 
ভাব অঙ্করের জন্য ওয়ান হু হ্যাজ দিস লাভ অফ গড এর অ্যাওয়েকেন অর এরাইজ সি ইফ ইউ হ্যাভ দিস ক্যারেক্টার ইন এ ওয়ান সেন্টেন্স ইউ ক্যান সি লাইক আর ইউ অলওয়েজ anxious to utilize your time in devotional service you don't like to be idle you are 24 hours engaged 24 hour engage has a two way to look at it 24 hour engage means even if you are sleeping you sleeping for krishna this body need to be given rest so that it can serve tomorrow So yes, you can start 24 hours. When something disaster takes place, are you reserved for severant in your practice? Or you also give up practice? Are you withdrawing your attraction from the sense object? We don't own the world, so we don't have to give up the world because we don't own it. It will be artificial, you know, impersonalist, sannasi, they think like that, that to give up this world. We don't have to give up the world because we don't own. But we do own the attraction for it. Attraction for sense and German. Actually, you can be more happy and enjoy life better if you, lo- if you can actually discipline the attraction. This is up to you. Krishna will not do it for you. Nobody will do for you. You have to voluntarily, with knowledge, jadasina karma ganti nibandana. Chindanti kovidas, the wise people, they chindanti, they cut this attachment with knowledge. More we hear means it's actually cutting. You cannot see it, but in your subtle body, it's actually cutting. And uh, uh, don't take it personally, but in a one sense, you will never be able to enjoy like Kormi. The Kormis, they can enjoy drinking, women, men, or party, or club, or whatever they enjoy, cars, whatever. Devotee, can, once they become little serious, if they go back, they can never enjoy like Kormi. They will go for it, then they come back. Go for it, come back. They get frustrated. Why? Because they are binding of the karma to enjoy. It's like a cut. You know, if rope is cut here, there, you never can bind with it. It loosens. It never takes. That's what happens. Which is great. But of course, sometimes, if they don't understand the philosophy, then they get frustrated. I'm like useless. I cannot even enjoy. One devotee says, I'm over 50. I don't know what will happen next life. At least can I enjoy this life? I say with intelligence, you will never be able to enjoy. But with stupidity, you can try. Sure, pigs, pigs are enjoying. The whole day eating pigs. They don't even think about Krishna or anything. But with intelligence, you cannot. Because you will see the result of what you are going to enjoy. And he just immediately you withdraw the attraction for it. Then there are symptoms like <clears throat> devotee does not long for any material respect in return for his activities. Always certain that Krishna will bestow his mercy upon me. Always very eager to serve the Lord faithfully. You are very much attached to the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. You are always eager to discuss the transcendental qualities of the Lord. You are very pleased to live in a place where the Lord's pastimes are performed. So these are the symptoms. These are the symptoms. Yeah. And then, of course, details. Let's see, 1150. Well, maybe at least, at least out of nine, I can explain one. <clears throat> Skanti. Skanti that uh, there's so much to say when we pray for help amidst problems but our prayer is not answered because recently one devotee told me that 
that I'm praying, but it seems like. So then we had a talk. Then we asked, why is Krishna not helping? We also doubt, does Krishna help? But seems like his help does not always match our expectation. Why not? Because Krishna sees things differently from us. Just like a mother sees things different from the child. Mother has a bigger, far deeper and far-sighted vision of upbringing that child. But the child cannot see. It's getting dark outside. is animal and other mothers say, no, come inside. You're going to take bath. No more playing outside. But the child is crying. I saw child is crying. Doesn't want to come. He, he cannot see the danger. But mother sees. Mother cares. If the child can adapt the mood and the care and affection that the mother knows my happiness, my safety, much more than I can see it, then the child will be happy clown. But very difficult. Because we are individual. We want to figure out on our own how I am going to progress. We take guru and sadhu and shastra, but still we don't want to like follow exactly. We want to put our idea with guru's idea. Guru's idea is yes, to chant, but I'll chant only this way, this much. Not Simple hearted is very hard, but simple hearted means just do the way devotee asks you to do. Senior devotee asks you to do. Then it's simple. As I mentioned, that famous verse, I think I mentioned before also, Vedaham Samati Tani Bhattamana Nicha Arjuna. Bhavishtani Cha Bhutani Mantuvedana Kastra. We see the present and plan the future. But Mother or Krishna sees the future and plans the present. That's why those who are serious and sincere, they perform daily devotional service and become empowered with conviction that even if it seems Krishna is not helping, He is always helping. And believe me, you will see in Ramayana I saw last two weeks, saints' views are when somebody treats us unfairly and hurtfully. We naturally feel angry even revengeful. But such an attitude traps us in negativity. Negativity will control you if we allow it to enter in your mind. 90% people in this world allow negativity to enter in their mind. Whereby we hurt ourselves more than anyone else. What to do? We may wonder. Or may even get bewildered. <laughs> but if you just sit down and think how this Chaitanya Charitamrita advises us that this material world is a place of misery does not mean we have to accept, you know, atrocity. So what should we do? So focus not on the wrongdoer. Focus on ultimate doer, Lord Krishna. You know, in Abhanti Brahmana, I remember we studied that chapter very thoroughly. That if someone bites, Abhanti Brahman says in 11th canto 23rd chapter, text, uh, I believe 49, 50, 51, very nice. And he says, he gave the conclusion that if someone bites his tongue with his own teeth, at whom can he become angry when he suffers? No blame needed to teeth or tongue. One should tolerate suffering, which arises from Jiva's identity with the mind. So one should attribute 
false to nothing except the mind. And skanti, the, the first um, symptom of this uh, nine symptom when you have a love of God. Perseverance, remaining tolerant and patient, even amidst disturbance. We should remember. Means forgiveness. But also translated, if you look at the Skanti, Prabhupada, some places he translates as a tolerance. As one advances in Vaishnava life, then tolerance should increase. Actually, in one place, I remember Prabhupada says, greatness of achievement in, in Bhakti calls measured by the uh, tolerance, the, the, the capacity of your tolerance. Like how much you learn to tolerate, that much you are advanced. So this is uh, how Srila Prabhupada explained. Like a Haridas Thakur, of course, that's a very extreme example. Was such a Vaishnav that he came, and Mahaprabhu gave him a place in Siddha Bokul to stay in Jagannath Puri. And... Uh, he went through so many challenges in his life. He was able to tolerate all of those things and remain fixed on the holy name of Krishna. He went through the temptation of sense gratification when Mayadevi came to tempt him, went through suffering when they beat him in 22 marketplace. He went through sickness when his body was practically immobile. And Mahaprabhu came. You see, you heard in Chaitanya Chaitanya. Mahaprabhu came and told him, reduce your chanting. Puridas Thakur says, no, I will not reduce my chanting. So he was so tolerant of all these difficulties and remained fixed in spiritual practice. If you think of those three things, sense gratification, suffering, and sickness, just these three things, sense gratification, suffering, and sickness. This, for most of us, big obstacle for our spiritual life. When there is opportunity for sense gratification, we become diverted. I mean, I, I look back 20 years, 30 years back, if the opportunity to make money, I would jump in it. If there is the opportunity to chant uh, 10 more rounds or 5 more rounds or 2 more rounds, I would not jump immediately. Now it's different. Now I love to, but those days I remember. So I can relate when I read Rupa Goswami Pat's uh, explanation. Even when we go through sickness, body or mind, it is very difficult to enthusiastically apply ourselves. Like other day, I had a little headache. I generally never get headache anymore. But I had a, all of a sudden heavy. And our temple, of course, locked down, but I have to take care of the Prabhupada's Guru Puja and the plates, Aruti tray, and just to and make sure the Bhagavatam classes is there. Sometimes the speaker cannot come. So I end up uh, giving more classes than uh, average. Uh, generally, Alachua is a big community. We have a Many, many serious, sincere devotees. But with this uh, quarantine, it's like very difficult for a lot of devotees. So, as I said, like it's very difficult to enthusiastically apply ourselves. And therefore, through Haridas Thakur, Mahaprabhu was teaching skanti. What is skanti? Learn to tolerate. The material world means there will be sense gratification, there will be suffering, there will be sickness. But through all of these things, learn to tolerate and remain fixed in spiritual life. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada writes in the Krishna book. What did he write? I remember that, that quote. It's like a sloka. The greatness of Vaishnava is measured by the ability to tolerate provoking situations. Maybe next time we'll discuss the other eight symptoms, it's already 12 o'clock. Any question, Mataji, or any reflection, or any addition? 
Thank you for the very powerful class. The class was really good. Really well put. A lot of things to reflect on. I especially like the conversation of that you uh, spoke about Tulsi Maharani's prayers. It's important to converse. And uh, by the way you took it, uh, it was very beautiful. Very, very nicely done. Thank you so much. The entire class was very beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any questions. I just wanted to appreciate it. Thank you. You please bless me and pray for me. We seek your blessings, Prabhu Jashla Prabhupada. Hi Krishna Prabhu. Um just Hare one question. Yeah, just one question. Yes. Um about Shatrugna. If you can um just repeat for me um the breakdown of his name as well as um if you could also say what you were trying to the point you were making about the real import of his name. Satrugna? Are you talking about Satrugna? The Lord yes. Lord's brother, youngest youngest brother? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, how, how did you break down the name first? S A T R U, Satru. Satru means enemy. It's a common in India, even I think most of the language in India, they know Satru means enemy. I know in Bengal, in Nepal, in Urisha, they do in Hindi language, yeah, Satru means enemy. I think they do everything. And Ragna means destroy, terminate. So when you think of Satrugna, then the question raised that each brother represents something, like a Lord Ram, uh, uh, in his, uh, I mean, he manifested unlimited quality, but what, when I hear, I pick few that I can apply in my life. Like a Lord Ram, first thing he says, that uh, <clears throat> from very beginning, till end of his life journey, that if we have a connection with him, if we have a connection just like Hanuman, Hanuman may not be necessarily with Ram in a physical proximity, but internally he is in physical proximity through holy name. So he said that anybody has a contact with me, they will never have a fear, they will never take birth here. Yeah. He, he quoted those things, Varjanam bhava bijanam, arjanam sukha sampadam, tarjanam jamadutanam, ram ram eti garjanam. That uh, we can do the same thing. We can chant in our mind and we should practice it. Even we have nothing to do, we are done with chanting and everything. No, just force yourself chant. When you chant, you are connected actually. How you are connected, you may not in practically see it, but in a subtle body, subtle body you are connected, at that time, that connection will give you a result that eventually you will become fearless. Today virus, tomorrow something else. You will feel free. It's such a, a jubilation feeling. Not that we are looking for liberation from this fear, but it is part of the byproduct of bhakti. And why not? Because that encourages us to go further. So Satrugna, Satru, S-A-T-R-U, Agna, uh, Agna is like a A-G-N-A, I'm, no, Agna. Yeah, yeah. G-N-A. Agna. Yeah. So Agna means termination. So what termination, what enemy he terminated? Our biggest enemy is not outside, it's inside. You know, in other ages, there is a one verse in Chaitanya Bhagavad he says, Kali Yuge Rakshas Viprer Gare Janmibek Sujaner Hingsa Kari Bhare. So the commentary given by different Acharyas, including Bhakti Siddhanta Guru, that in other ages, the demon and the devotee, they used to live in different planets. So there was no problem. 
as long you live in your planet you don't have a problem with the other people but as the ages uh, the vice was coming up and the virtue was going down then the demon and devotee they started living in the same country or same planet and as it progressed they lived in the same village and same house then in kali yuga within one body there is a both nature is there <laughs> krishna says this is very interesting that the western concept you know evil and good angel and bad angel sometime in google i saw that uh, this is actually it is krishna's uh, own expression somebody put it into uh, some painting that good and bad or demoniac and de- uh, good nature both exist within us so like uh, <clears throat> you know good thing is that we don't know all the devotees all all the people that we are surrounded by what they think of me if you really <laughs> could see if you really could see that everybody what they think of me oh my I would god be like, oh my god <laughs> how can he thinks like this how can she thinks like this how can he thinks like this it's oh horrible i don't want to live here <laughs> but krishna is very kind he did not let our thought come in a uh, written format or you know uh, te- texting format <laughs> so that was a g- good part of krishna such a wonderful <laughs> so then satrugna means he destroyed the inner false pride that false pride false ego that create all this problem he he destroyed and the way he destroyed that he could not do on his own but by serving a devotee senior sincere devotee of lord ram even the hanuman is a great devotee but uh, bharat is considered a, a rasagrahi bhakta with uh, with a lord ram a very um, how would you say um establish, just like you know in christianity if you studied bible in christianity uh, nobody calls uh, anybody judas because they think judas is like a betrayer and i remember one time i studied a couple years uh, with uh, one senior sanasi and uh, part time every day would study and understand and judas uh, if you look at his life even though he got bribed apparently uh, from the scribe and this, but what he did with that those silver coin he didn't enjoy it he threw it away he apparently also left this world but what judas mon- most important point the christianity don't see that we see that judas actually promoted jesus see how the scribe and the priest in the those those area they did not even know who is jesus so they bribed judas to introduce who jesus is who is messiah that means they did not have a power to understand or recognize who is that messiah so in one sense judas did a great favor to the world by introducing jesus even though he got crucified in a sense so christianity has the idea of this way but then we look at other side also so similarly what bharat did and hanuman did there is a vast difference bharat did he was opposed but it looks like he is most favorable to ram he did not want to do anything to with his mother he didn't even call her mother he said from today you're not my mother because i am a servant of ram you ask this boon that me to become the king and you rejected uh, my brother then you are not qualified to be mother because he considers serving to god is ultimate goal and anybody is on the way should be avoided and that's true in that principle but what bharat did he exhibited this beautiful episode that he um, gathered all the queen, all the mothers all the ministers all the ayudha sincere serious devotees who loves ram 
uh, even though they did not see the Ram's ruling because he was going to be coronated, and next day he is being banished. I mean, same day he was banished for 14 years. So what Bharat did, he was going to exhibit his love. To, no, he was going to establish the pure love by showing our sentimental love. In this world, everybody is sentimental. Sentimental is like Kongsa. Kongsa loves his sister so much, Devaki. He is going to act as a Sudra. How? He is going to be a charioteer. Oh, because I love my sister so much. And he started like a little emotional. He said, I'll take you to your home. I will ride your chariot. But as soon as the, the, the rumble, voice, aerial voice, loudly spoke out in the sky, you fool Kongsha, uh, the eighth child of this uh, Mataji or lady will be kill you. What happened his love for her, his sister? You see, his hand, uh, right hand was uh, with the whip, left hand with, with the rein of the chariot. He gave both hands out and he grabbed Devuki's hair with the left hand and he threw the whip and pulled the sword out to kill her. Now you think like, what kind of love is this? I am better than that. No, no, most of the people in this world are in that category. <laughs> it's not graphically maybe demonstrated like that, but most of the people in this world they call love is actually like that. But what Bharat did, he was bringing this material love in this forest where King Janako was uh, chosen or 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 you say selected as to be a judge you know and they had a court session one side plaintiff and defendant one side was Bharat and Ayudhavasi with three mothers and Vaishishta and all the Gurujan elderly and the other side is only Lord Ram, Sita and Lakshman so they had a big court I'm not going to give you whole details it's, a, it's sweet but it's like a long and the conclusion is, at the end, when Bharat told Satrugna, because I'm failing everything, every attempt I'm doing to bring Ram back to Ayutthaya to take over the kingdom, I'm not getting success. I'm going to exhibit in front of them that I love him more than anybody ever can imagine. So he came up with the idea that this is his pure love. How are you going to do it? He told Satrugna, his brother, you go make the fire. Like a uh, fire means a, a wood uh, lined up and Bharat going to jump in the fire and he'll burn, he'll commit suicide, in other words, to show the world that he loves Ra Ram so much. And the King Janaka says, but the definition of love does not say that this is the definition of love. Definition of love is that a lover attentive and careful about the desire of his or her beloved. Never mixes his or her own desire. So Bharat, you're going to kill yourself in that fire to show that you love Ram more than anybody in the world. And your love is like a very high esteem. But did you ever, did it ever occur to you whether it will please Ram or not? Otherwise it is not even love. It is selfish. It is mundane love. Bharat started crying. Oh my God, I never thought that. Please ask Ram. So they asked Ram right in front. Will you be happy if I show that I love you so much and I'll kill myself? Ram said, of course not. Absolutely not. So then King Janago says, then what kind of love is that you have? Sometimes we see our love is like a deep ocean and our beloved's love is like a big mountain. You know, sometimes mountains sink in the ocean. If you take it sentimental way, it is not love at all. It is all selfish motive. Of course, at the end of the session was wonderful. Lord Ram says, 
since this whole episode took place, emotional, then this emotion has to be aligned with the scripture. Then it is devotion. If the emotion is not aligned with the scripture, it is commotion. It disturbs the world. <laughs> disturbs the society. <laughs> so then Ram says, okay, I'll be the king of Ayodhya. Since father died, I'll be the king of the Ayodhya and I'll rule it. And who are you? Vara says, I'm your order carrier, servant. Good. Now you rule the kingdom on my behalf for 14 years. <laughs> and after 14 years, I'll come back. Then Bharat understood the definition of pure love. And he was so happy. So that inner journey, it stopped by the false pride. And Satrugna has killed by establishing through Bharat, what is the pure, de pure love definition? You know, there are 12 Mahajan. Every Mahajan say, gave the definition of pure love. This is King Janaka's definition, actually. The definition of pure love. A lover has to be always attentive and careful about the desire of beloved. Never mixes his own desire. Is that okay for Satrugna? Um, the person who showed Bharat what real love was, was it Satrugna or was it um, Janak? I got a little lawyer. King Janaka, King Janaka as a judge. You know, the, the lawyer proposed this, but the lawyer cannot uh, make the verdict. You follow? So, yeah. Satrugna was going um, uh, to... Uh, go, Satrugna presented everything. He carried whatever Bharat wants. Because of his dedication, then King Janaka, he put everything together and he gave that verdict. This is the definition of pure love. Mm -hmm. Satrugna is a very, very, very special devotee. Generally, we don't hear so much. Yeah, yeah. Because he killed the most, you know, literally, if you think, he killed the most prominent enemy. It is called internal enemy, false pride. And only way false pride will go, believe me, because I come from that background, that I did not want to serve the devotees. I, I love God, I love Krishna, I will serve Krishna. Eh, devotee, eh, I don't care. <laughs> I had this for decades, I remember. But I would not tell this in public those days, because I care for my own prestige. But now I look at back, how dummy I was, how foolish, that if I do not have a desire to serve the Vaishnavas, other devotees, the false pride will never lead. So what Bharat did, what Satrugna did, he served Bharat very one-pointed. And this way he killed that false pride in him. Um, this might be a little bit tangential, but you, you did bring up Judas, how... Um, can you just explain a little bit how, um, you know, he, he is, he, his reputation is as traitor, but how did he, Who? Judas of the Bible. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he, <laughs> it appears, because I had a talk with this minister here in Alachua, actually two, two times with two different ministers. Because uh, we, we see the Bible in bhakti, tradi bhakti tradition. Their view is more of a karmakanda mixed bhakti. It's not pure bhakti. Yeah. Because the idea of going to heaven, not go to hell, mm -hmm. but nowhere is mentioned for the pleasure of God. I want to go there to serve him. It does not mm -hmm. say exactly like this. But I want to be with God there for what? So I'll be, uh, never suffer in hell and I'll be happy. So I'm looking for my own pleasure. But we as servant, we're supposed to look for the pleasure of God, Krishna. Then our pleasure is within that. Our happiness is within that, automatically. Just mean to stay, Jagat to stay. When Krishna is happy, in the whole, everybody is happy. So in... in uh, Judah's case, 
that uh, he apparently he looks like a trader that uh, he took the money or silver coin i i guess those days that's how the currency was mm-hmm. that he took the bribe he took the bribe in order to um uh, pointing who is the messiah but if you look at from a high angle of vaishnavism bhakti tradition if somebody can recognize prabhupada's position as the elevated soul that he is a very intimate associate of god average people do not see that when they saw prabhupada like one devotee here he he was in a uh, navy no sorry he was in mary anyway he was he and his brother both came to see prabhupada in san francisco but one joined and he still devotee serious devotee and I, his brother never joined so i was talking to him one time i said what was the difference that why i can see we are all individual uh, that's true but what made you a impression to join and whole life you are chanting you are just typical american you ate same thing your brother ate and he never joined he said he never depreciate even though he came to propad he said how can you say he is like jesus i say is he a good christian he said no he doesn't believe in anything i said how did he know if jesus would come today if jesus would come in philadelphia where they came originally joined and how would he recognize jesus in bible time bethlehem they, they did not recognize the messiah there is to be private meeting with the two, 12 tribes you know some it was not like a public everywhere so they did not even recognize that who jesus messiah is that means they don't have a knowledge and nothing backing they did not have a, even though they are advanced so called advanced they did not have ability to recognize the position of jesus same thing when proper like just like a morning walk one mata ji lady uh, she didn't join we don't know her now but she was such a lovely she saw proper picture on the front page of newspaper and so she also came on a morning walk proper also went on a morning walk and then she uh, took a extra step she actually started coming faster he saw that she saw that from far and she stopped and probad looked at her and he said you are and she is holding the newspaper she said you are swami yes and then she smiled it is very nice and probad said thank you yes good morning and and probad was very happy now one of a senior devotee from goria mart uh, in mayapur i was showing this picture and that maharaj is proper god brother very advanced soul too he said this, this is unbelievable this lady just smiling at proper then appreciating she is not a devotee she doesn't know maybe all the philosophy but she appreciated proper all her of that she is going to suffer or go to hell is finished diminished she doesn't have to suffer or go to hell or anything just because she appreciated a bishnop a great bishnop like prabhupada now of course not everybody in america did that so i was i was bringing that example what made so not everybody in bethlehem could recognize jesus as a messiah but judas judas knew and he did and he promoted jesus indirectly to the world that he is the messiah and you know from that from that day jesus became known as a messiah of course he went to some suffering uh, apparently but he was not complaining about it he said father please forgive them so my point is that because he revealed the world who this person is like jodubar prabhu he will propose through his movie he made this beautiful uh, mm-hmm. uh, movie that uh, traveling all over the world uh it was playing in italy last month uh yeah last month uh was about 32 cinema i mean uh, movie hall in italy different cities but so nice so nice so they promote who probably they are great souls 
But in Christianity, not everybody recognized. They think he's a traitor. He's not a, he's not a good name. Don't call your son Judas. Don't give that name. But he's not a traitor. He actually revealed Jesus' position in the whole world. But that wasn't his mood, though. I mean, that was the outcome, right? But it was not yeah. his mood to be that of not benefit. His mood. Mm-hmm. That is not his mood, but still, he will get benefited from, from our angle. Mm-hmm. Maricha, if, if you know the story of Maricha, Maricha, demon, literally he's a demon, a pure demon. I mean, I don't know whether it's the proper English, pure demon. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> in his action, through his action, he was a pure demon, in a sense. But Mar- Maricha, if you look at Maricha's life, and you study Ramayan and that, that, okay, first of all, knowing that he would be killed by Ravana or Ram, this is the conclusion you will see. Maricha acted with spiritual knowledge, but worked against the purpose of such knowledge. That was the big, big mistake from our side. But nonetheless, he's superior than other demons. Because he knew who Ram is. But he did not want to serve Ram, but he did serve Ram. Because when Ra, he came as a golden deer, and that separation passed time where Ram released in separation from Sita. So he participated in the past time, but he did not know that he is actually helping in the past time. Mm-hmm. But he got liberation. And mm-hmm. not only liberation, he actually enjoyed, I tell you, if I recall, that um, one of the Acharya, uh, I think, uh, one of the Ramana Acharya, uh, one of the five gurus. Uh-oh. Oh. Yeah. oh. Oh, my phone died. Hold on. Yeah. I, I, okay. So anyway, the point was that even in Mauritius' case also, he was relishing a, a taste, a taste uh, of one of the 12 Rosa. And uh, that was very, very surprising that how Mauritius, Mar- he was actually relishing that taste. If you read it, uh, that... Uh, just by hearing Ram's name, his body would shock. Which wrestler was that? He was awesome. You know, like, uh, like for an example, uh, you know, you heard about Surpa. I, I'm just thinking how much. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, one time, that when Surpanaka made Ravana fall for to get Sita, so then Ravana, he decided how he is going to do. He was not interested to fight with Ram. He was interested for Sita. Mm-hmm. So Ravana, uh, he remained reluctant. Then Surpanaka incited him by describing Sita's devastating beauty. The last three demons what happened to Ravana's intelligence soon lies devastated. So what did Ravana do? He resolved to abduct Sita and again goes to Maricha. What he did to Maricha, he ordered him to assume the form and attractive deer. There is a there is a video movie made even in YouTube and other you can see those. That go to the go the forest where Ram and Sita are living in exile and lead Ram away, thus leaving Sita unguarded. When Maricha protests against the foolhardy plan, Ravana silences him with an ultimate He says, do as I say, or I'll kill you. Now, if you look at it from an intelligent angle, hearing Ravana declare, Happily, that he has come to order Maricha and not to hear his suggestion. You know, they are related. 
you know, Maricha is a um, uncle. And he addressed uh, Rabono as a nephew. He said, I am a king. You don't call he, a king as a nephew. It's insulting. He didn't, mm. he, he didn't care his relationship. He wants everybody to be subordinate to him. So Maricha realized that the demon king is beyond listening to any good counsel. And reluctantly, he agrees to go along with Ravana's king. Now why? He reason his death is inevitable. That's true. So he might as well choose the best death. Mm-hmm. Dying at the hands of Ram will lead him to his elevation. Possibly mm-hmm. even liberation. Whereas dying at the hands of Ravana will take him where? To some unknown place? Hell? Oh, we don't know. Mm-hmm. Even he didn't know. He was scared. So, resigning himself to fate, Marita assumed the form of this easy, this table, etc. So, you know, in one sense, we see that uh, what Marita did, not that he studied so much philosophy, but just by Ram's uh, arrow, that previously, when he was with his mother and brother Subahu and uh, Taraka in Vishamitra's place, he remembers the trauma of the forced flight leaves Ram's awesome power forever impressed in Mauritius' mind. We should remember that. So that's why, even though Mauritius is not considered a devotee, but he got a high destination. Yeah. Indirectly, indirectly yeah. he helped Ram's Leela. Judas also yes. indirectly promoted Jesus. But as you said, he was not, he did not call him as Jedi too, so how could he, how can we say that he um, was having one of the 12 wrestlers? He, because Ram allowed, Ram mercifully allowed. You know, you know, the one of the 12 verses, secondary also is called Dread. Yeah. It's called what? Dread. Oh, dread, Maricha, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Maricha dreadfully afraid of Ram. Okay, okay, wherever, okay. You know how he was? Wherever he looked, she saw Ram. He was so yes. hypnotized by the fear. And since uh-huh. Ram's arrow sent him so far to get spiritual hypnosis, always he's thinking of Ram. In sleeping, in wake, <laughs> he already, he instantly, when he, Ram killed him, he got liberation and he immediately went. Such a high elevation. And he participated in the first times, indirectly. But he did not know he was participating. Mm-hmm. So similarly, mm-hmm. Judah's position is like this. Judah's position is higher. Higher? How high? Yes, higher than others because, like for example, Peter. Now, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, Peter, Jesus told to Peter sometime before that, Peter, you're going to betray me. Mm-hmm. And he said, no, no, Master, I'll never do that. And he repeated, Peter, you will betray me. He said, no, absolutely not. Third time he said, Peter, you're going to betray me. And Peter supposed to be the senior most amongst all his twelve. Now, mm-hmm. when the priests and scribes, they actually came forward and they arrested Jesus and they asked, they are trying to find who else is with him. They asked Peter, do you know him? What did he say? No, I don't. Three times they asked and three times he betrayed. He said, no, he doesn't know. Fear of death was so scary. Just like mm-hmm. with the virus, we are, people are scared in this world. Mm-hmm. The devotee should not be scared. Okay. Yeah, um, one, just one last thing is that, you know, if, you know, for a person to have secondary rise means that they also have primary. So what would Marichi's primary rise be? Well, you, when you meet him, you have to ask him. <laughs> okay. 
I guess it's not anywhere in scripture. No, but he definitely went to that much absorption to Ram. He will get Ram uh, relationship with something. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. We don't know. But when you meet him, you can ask him what relationship (laughs) you start. Hopefully, one day I can qualify to meet him. Sure. Yeah. Okay, Prabhu. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. Dandavat, Pranam. Dandavat, Mata. Mata, Prabhu, what was your reference, Prabhu? What books did you refer for uh, the Ramayana lecture, Prabhu? To follow along? Oh, what? Oh, you know what? I am like a kind of a, uh, what do you call, seeker. I seek any anywhere. I have a Balmiki Ramayana access. I also, because uh, Ramapod Maharaj actually, he's such a nice devotee. He woke me up uh, by saying that why they are accusing without Balmiki Ramayana, we don't listen. But if you look at those pastimes, that Lord Chaitanya was dancing in front of Rameshwaram. Now, Rameshwaram, I went personally there also, two times. And it's not in Balmiki Ramayana. But Lord Chaitanya was dancing and he was appreciating this pastime that Lord Ram worshipped Shiva. Now Lord Ram worshipped Shiva, it was not in the beginning. It was after he killed Ravana because Ravana comes from a Brahmana family, Bisrava. Uh, Pulasta Rishi, uh, the, the Swayam Bhubha Manu and uh, Mother Sadrupas, you know the whole dynasty. I, I mean, I have a whole chart made one time. So the, the so they come from a Brahman family. So Lord Ram, out of teaching others, he felt a little um, obliged to do some ceremony. So he worshipped Lord Shiva there. Now Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went there and he was respecting this and he was dancing, chanting and remembering these pastimes. But this is not in Balmiki Ramayana. You follow? Then the another one is that uh, South Indian, uh, what do you call, um, um, Brahmana, the mm-hmm. Kurma, um, not Kurma Brahmana, there's a Brahmana who was uh, fasting and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu mm-hmm. wanted to take prasadam, but then he is not taking prasadam and then Mahaprabhu mm-hmm. says, why are you not taking prasadam? He says, because I'm devastated. This is in Madhulila. Uh, you can see that Madhulila 9 chapter, many, many uh, pastimes is there, that when Mahaprabhu was passing by, then this Brahmana says, I cannot tolerate, I feel like to kill myself, that how possible this demon Ravana kidnapped Mother Sita. And it's giving me such a pain. So Mahaprabhu, I'm sure you heard that story. So Mahaprabhu went far that near Setu Bondo, a place in South India, Kerala, I believe in Kerala or somewhere in South. Uh, place is called Setu Bondo. I remember we went there, but I, now I forget the state, <laughs> which state, you know, some name change also. Those days used to be Madras, now it's called Chennai. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's a place, Setu Bondo. I think they still call Setu Bondo. Maybe not. I don't know. So there, the temple is there. And Mahaprabhu was uh, relishing that pastime that how Lord uh, Ram worshipped. That is not there. And then this story that Mahaprabhu went to those Brahmanas there and he found in Kurma Puran, this story is given that actually the Sita Devi uh, when Lakshman Rekha was given, see Lakshman Rekha is another thing, is not there in Balmi Ramayana. That Lakshman put the arrow, uh, with the, sorry, with the arrow he made a line for Mother Sita not to cross this for safety. And when Mother Sita uh, was trying to cross, she did not want to, but then Ravana was, you know, I guess duplicious uh, sannasi can be very tricky, sneaky. And he did. He made her fall for it to go. And then when she uh, crossed, that was a Maya Sita. Was the, the real Sita state this side of the uh, Lakshman Rekha. This explanation, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu found and he gave. But it is not from Balmiki Ramayana. 
so other purano and other ramayan are also glorifying and we can accept a lot of things that not necessarily mahaprabhu shown us like this that this story is not in valmiki rama so that doesn't yes, mean we don't accept mahaprabhu so you understand the concept so i have a kirti bas uja ramayan here right here with me i read that also because it's a poetic form i like poetic way of in bengali and uh, that is a shoili purno if you can get in touch with shoili purno's uh, explanation of ramayan to ramanujacharya is phenomenal it has so much details more than balmiki ramayan it is i mean it is coming from balmiki ramayan just like a proper purport sometimes speak louder than krishna's uh, sloka or in other words krishna sloka is there but i cannot understand sometimes but when i read proper purport it is clear so like this shoili purna gave so details with commentary to ramanuj acharya now who is ramanuj acharya he is lakshman himself he is listening ramayan and he is relishing so these are all bona fide In, in, in Prabhu, how sense. do we get that? Prabhu, how do we get that? How how can we get access to the Kerala put? Um, they 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 have in Tamil and somebody was translating. I don't know whether I'm sure they did probably. I have to find out. Okay. And also in Telugu language, Swali Purnas is there also. Swali Purnas Ramayan. Um, but problem is sometimes some of the. i don't mean to criticize but some of the mm, soi bait they intervene and twisted some words so we should get the one that our uh, devotee translated because they in, in filter you know chaitanya charitamrita is authentic chaitanya bhagavat is also authentic but we don't use too much as a um siddhanta siddhanta we take chaitanya chaitamrita number 1 chaitanya mangal we bring reference but we cannot establish all siddhanta from chaitanya mangal even though these are all mahapurus associate why because some of the followers intervene and twisted something just like bhakti ratnakar bhakti ratnakar is also written by a pure devotee narahari mm-hmm. chakravarti mm-hmm. narari chakravarti but bhakti siddhant sarsvati thakur says we cannot establish the principle on base of bhakti ratnakar and the reason is i mean there are many reason but generally we don't talk in public for that that they were supporting little bit of gornagar and this is one of the third in upper sampraday and we condemn that they thought chaitanya mahaprabhu i mean nimai he is a krishna and we are his girlfriend this concept is not bona fide but that was there that was there the so prabhu this lakshman rekha was in kurma puran you said lakshman rekha is is in kirtiva sujas ramayan is there and madhacharya quoted also so it is uh, somewhere madhacharya's line also that is there somewhere but it is in kirtiva suja i can uh, but i don't know if you, do you read bengali oh, no but this is not you know this is not bengali what a problem is it's a, a, you know chaitanya charitamrita is also bengali but it is not really bengali because some of the lines it's like a sanskrit it's not even bengali like when we have a bengali people read it they don't understand they read it but it, it is a, a, like a sadhu bhasha and chalti bhasha we call there is two types of bengali chalti bhasha everybody understand sadhu bhasha they don't like if you say sri daito das kirtane te aaj kara uchcha sare hari naam rao they don't even know what daito das means so when is it daito das they don't know what daito das means it's like a sanskrit even in sanskrit like they have to like ponder what is trying to say so like that even uh, this poetic form of kirtiba suja ramayan it's uh, like you need a dictionary uh, to uh, grasp it but he gives also very details 
but I always keep the Balmiki Ramayana as the main reference sources. But certain thing we we see that Acharyas they uh, establish the point, then we accept those. If I find uh, English uh, bona fide translation, I'm sure they do exist uh, in Chopati or Jab. You know Jab, uh, Guvardhaniko village uh, in Maharashtra. Uh, they might have also. I'm sure they have. Some of them has over there. I'll find out. I can find out and let you know. That will be great, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Thank and uh, I have one more question, Prabhu. From last class, mm -hmm. we were talking about um, the impulse and the response, and uh, the response is uh, closer to the uh, closer to what Krishna thinks. And impulse is uh, uh, just out of the fit of anger. You you say something, um, and uh, we always have to be closer to what Krishna desires, and that is the response. Is that right? Is my understanding right, Prabhu? Impulse, and we were talking about just trying to recollect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Response means it's coming from conscious being, the soul. When you know you heard this, Prabhupada says, first you become conscious, then Krishna conscious. And the reason Prabhupada says because most of the people they're not even conscious. Conscious means you are thinking about it. You know the result of it. You are aware of it. What the consequences. And you feel good about it. Then you act on it. That comes naturally from the soul. Consciousness. Impulse is like a default. You know. Worst example is like. Uh, I hope it doesn't happen. But it happened in my iPhone. Like I was driving and I was trying to. One senior devotee, he said something, I said, thank you, Hare Krishna. And it turns out it's hate Krishna because it is autocorrect, autocorrect or automatically. They don't have a Hare, so they have a hate. I don't know if it ever happened to others, but it happened a couple of times and I'm so scared. <laughs> that. Uh, and then Maharaj was kind. He said, before you send to me next time, you look at it. I said, I thought I looked at it, Maharaj. It was like very quick. I'm driving. I said, Hare Krishna. But no, it, it corrects hate Krishna. Because in auto correct. So similarly, impulse means it, there is a storage in the mind. Maya is in charge through the mind. And she has her agenda. I don't know if it ever happened to you. Like you finish your rounds. What should I do now? You think. And... Dramatic explanation is given by Sanatana Goswami Pad that Krishna is on your one side looking at you. Okay, you're done with your job or now what are you going to do? You're going to look at me, you do things for me. And Maya is on his back, other side, looking at you and telling you these are the least you wanted. She is ready to tell you. And that's why she is in the sitting in three places. In your senses, in your mind, like she's sitting there, right there, with with the list of the things that I wanted. So it's not really her fault, but choice to make it's up to me. She will not force me. Neither Krishna will force. So when your response means whatever it is, and you are aware of it, what the consequences is. And say, for an example, one devotee is passing by and I'm feeling good and paying respect in my mind that, okay, this is a great devotee. Uh, even though I may not know that, but he's chanting. And Rupa Goswami Path says, Krishnati Jatsugiri Tam Manasadriyat. Krishnati Jatsugiri. Anybody is chanting Krishna's name, Manasadriyat, in, in your mind immediately you respect. So, okay, I, respect, I do this. I, uh, that's what I'm saying. So then I'm aware of why I'm doing this respect. Then I don't have any bad feeling about that devotee at all, even in future. So, it's an, like, so that's called response. Now it's like, uh, just, you know, I, I will not chanting this, chanting, I don't want to show my face. What I do, should I turn around? 
or should I just ignore right fast or something? This is impulse. It's, uh, wait, it seems like both are same. No, they're not same. One is you are aware why you doing things you are doing, and you have a spiritual either guru or sadhu or sastra backing. Then you are consciously doing. That is the response. Impulse is like a automatically comes in our mind. One devotee even told me in the mall. In the mall, one time, one devotee said that he, she did not like the other Matajis in one temple in San Diego. Maybe I should not say the name. But anyway, she said, when I heard your class, you know, I was thinking, like, I do this a lot of time. When I see the devotee in my working place, I just try to avoid. So I said, well, the offense, what is offense, if you really think? Offense means, Uttering or or creating a atmosphere or uttering a name which is consciously consciously made in the heart with enmity. So offense is not like unknowingly. Unknowingly Krishna will forgive. Offense means consciously. Means I'm seeing the devotee, but I don't want to respect. Why? Because I don't care. I just tired. I don't want to see the devotee's face. That is offense. Because one of the six Vaishnava offense is a desti, boy desti, Vaishnava nam na abhinandati. Vaishnava nam na abhinandati. When I see a Vaishnava, I don't feel happy. It is the offense. So then if you think like, okay, Rupa Goswami Pad is our leader, Prabhupada said this Krishna consciousness movement is based on the teachings of Rupa Goswami Pad. And Rupa Goswami Pad said we should respect any devotee we see, we should respect. And then respect, and then slowly, slowly it disappears. So this is called response. I don't know if that helps you. Makes perfect sense, Prabhu. Yes. Thank you. Any other or we end? Oh, it's almost one o'clock. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Koti Koti Dandrat Panam. Thank you very much for so much instruction and a very nectarine class. Dandrat Panam, Shila Kaupa, Shila Guru Dandrat Panam. Jai. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dhanat Pranam and Glory to Shla Prabhupada Maharaj. So much Prabhuji for your association. Thank you so much for the nice Krishna and for asking. Maybe we can end the call now. Okay. To Prabhuji and all the devotees. Let us pay our respectful obeisances to all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord who can fulfill the desire of everyone just like desire tree. Yeah.